out here on the rim, soldiers of the Empire are forced to fight fearless tribal warriors who can breathe fire, and on some planets these enemies are even known to explode on death for some inexplicable reason. Soldiers of the Empire are also enlisted to quell the evil mechanoids who threaten to take back the planets the Empire has captured in bloody, hard-fought battles. Now our soldiers are even forced to fight previously unknown horrors, but these encounters are the final straw for six unlucky soldiers. Arid mountainous regions offer the best hope for soldiers on the run. Now, listen up soldiers, this is your final debriefing. The mission is set to losing is fun with a few tweaks. Your contact on the inside goes by the name of Randy Random and he will provide you with everything you need, but keep a close eye on him because I don't trust anybody with a haircut like that. Thank you for joining me, everybody, for a brand new RimWorld series. I hope you enjoyed that little intro video. There are just a couple of details that I wanted to cover before we jump into the action. So the difficulty is set to losing is fun for this particular run, but I tweaked it so that the colonist insta-kill rate is set down from 100% to 10%. And one of the big reasons I did that is just because for this particular playthrough, we are not going to be recruiting anyone. We are going to start the colony with six people and hopefully we will end the run with the same six people. So the soldiers have all been sterilized. That's just a part of the normal training for uh, super soldiers in the Empire. But they also have cortical stacks installed. So if you're unfamiliar with that, that comes from the Altered Carbon mod, which basically allows if the body gets killed, you can remove the cortical stack and plant it into a cloned body. And then that person's personality lives on in the clone so essentially they can be immortal but we just have to get the technology research and of course get the resources together and start to make cloned bodies too so we're not going to be able to do that right away but that's definitely going to be one of our goals so that if anyone does die in the playthrough we can resurrect them right away but the mod list including that altered carbon and many many other mods is linked down in the description below guys so I've got the full collection set up for you you can just click that and download them all at once if you want to play along and as I mentioned, no recruiting, no children, and of course, all entities explode on death. So that is one of the things that I've set up here. And you can see I've also got a bunch of the anomaly incidents disabled. So anomaly is turned on as well as all the other DLCs. But you can see some of the more annoying ones like the Revenant, the uh, Metal Horror Implantation, those are gone. So we're just basically dealing with things which will straight up attack the colony. So I hope you guys are pumped for the new series let me know what you think of this one down in the comments below i'm always always excited to bring you guys more rim world content this is one of those games that i will always have featured on the channel i might take a week off in between series here and there but i definitely plan on coming at you guys with as much rim world as possible so thank you for joining me hit that like button before we get into the episode subscribe to the channel if you're new and let's see what kind of fun we can get into with our six super soldiers. And the struggle for survival begins. Armed only with the most basic weapons and combat enhancing drugs, our six super soldiers must now go out into the world and gather the resources they will need to sustain themselves and break ground on their very first buildings and progress into higher and higher levels of technology, which will allow us to one day not only fight the enemy, but become functionally immortal by developing machines which can take our consciousness and insert it into cloned bodies which will match the original bodies of our colonists perfectly. 
The arid shrubland that our soldiers find themselves in offers very little in the way of starting resources, basically just raw fruits and a little bit of wood wherever they can find it. So we have established a grow zone for heal root. That way our doctors don't have to tend people with their bare hands and we'll get some more gardening going. The good thing about this map though is there's a pretty nice little valley right here which is going to be easily defendable and will allow us a starting point where we can start to dig back into the mountain to expand our colony. Now you can see we've got a stockpile here set in the center of that little valley just starting to organize some of our resources and this will be the location of our very first building. I'm just going to build the walls directly around this stockpile here using some wood and a quick system that I like to do for kind of the foundation of all my colonies. So let's get started on that. For my colony's very first structure, I always like to start off with the planning tool and I will lay down a 15 by 15 square. Then I will take my structure, get the walls, and I'm going to leave the corners blank here. That's just because I'm min-maxing my wealth since I am playing on the hardest difficulty. Once we got the four walls in place, then I'm gonna come across the middle on the horizontal here. Now on the vertical, I'm actually gonna come over from the center just a couple so that we end up with two different size rooms up top here. Then we'll grab our door tool, place three doors, and now we functionally have three rooms. The first one will be our stockpile room. This one up here is gonna be the bunkhouse, and then we'll also have our cooking station and a few early production benches as well. And over here, we're going to have our prison so that we can capture any pawns that decide to attack us. As you can see, I have moved the starting structure back here a little bit closer to the mountain. In fact, we're now using the natural mountain as part of the wall. And as you can see, I've started to lay out some of the plans here. We've got our butcher table being built couple of stone cutters here. I've laid out just a whole bunch of prisoner rooms and we'll put some furniture in here too once we actually get some prisoners but no need to build it right away. Now you may ask yourself why do I want prisoners if we're not going to do any recruiting in this colony? Well that's just because we will do some organ harvesting for backups or just for trading purposes so we do need somewhere to keep you know prisoners and heal them up but uh, more we might all actually release them too, depending on what faction they come from. But while our constructors work on our little colony building here, let's take a look at some of the setup we've got. Now for my schedule, you can see that I'm not using the biphasic, but I did cut back the sleeping cycle so it was all the way up to I think six and over here they had a total of eight hours set to sleep but we've got a couple of quick sleepers here in the colony so this way if they're tired they can go to bed if they're not tired anymore they'll wake up early but it does give you know any couples who might come together and form a chance to still sleep together and get that little mood lit bonus for good love and oh look so to say, just as I say it too silver and gizmo are set up well these are definitely temporary here and um, getting some beds up and running is going to be essential. But now we get to build our very first double bed, so that's good. And of course, the barracks is something we're going to stick with, but this room is pretty much all temporary. We might take out these two northerly rooms and convert it all into a stockpile section, because that's one good thing about the 15 by 15. It does fit a trade beacon perfectly right in the center if you were to put it right where the store is. Of course, it makes a circular form here for the stockpile pile not a square but the walls do house it just right and next of course we'll probably want to look at the assign here i have set up a second drug policy just for the hussar but there's not much difference between that and the tweaks i've made to the social policy the hussar just gets extra go juice and is instructed to take one bottle of it or one injection i should say um on a schedule i think every four days is what i set it up let me know in the comments if there's a better cycle for go juice but regardless this is what all the other pawns are set for and i always turn smoke leaf and beer off because those hurt 
work production and efficiency and instead we just go with psych it of course we'll have these regimented as well for every two days but the only other thing is i've set up the panoxicillin here once we start producing it we'll want our people to take a little preventative medicine of course our three uh, medical pawns have herbalists or herbal medicine set up to carry for two little bundles of that and I guess the only other little tab we need to look at is maybe the work tab here. I won't go through all of this, but if you want, you can pause the video and kind of look through the way I've got it set up. And of course, all of this is subject to change. We might tweak the um, apparel policy or whatever, or the drug policy might get changed a bit too. But regardless, this is just kind of how I like to set things up to start with. Well, our very first trade caravan, and that also spells our very first social fight between Axel, one of our colonists, and Raven, who's of course a member of the trade caravan. Let's see, just some bruises and stuff. Doesn't look like anybody decisively won that fight, but I expect our man Axel here probably would have got the best of it had we let it go on. Luckily, it did stop before anybody got killed or we lost any faction influence with them. Unfortunately, we don't have the wealth to trade anything to them, but we're looking pretty good so far, trying to get the electricity up and running at the moment. I've got one solar panel. Now, of course, with the starting scenario, we started with solar and turrets early starter turret so again that's all linked down in the description the, the scenario the mod collection the map seed it's all down there below if you'd like to play along oh no our first casualty animal is down oh it was so stupid totally my fault too i forgot that i said it so all characters explode upon death that includes animals and of course raiders as well and he had just shot this camel went up to finish it off and it exploded in his face uh tore his leg off too look at that that's devastating he's dead in four hours oh my god well we're gonna have to rush somebody out here to save him let's see i've got to start to get acquainted with who my medical people are obviously because i can tell we're gonna need it quite a bit okay well randy it's granted us the ability to name our own settlement i have gone with the faction the super six obviously and for this one we're gonna call it nowheresville and that's just because no one's allowed here as i've previously stated we're doing no recruiting the colonists the soldiers are all sterilized so there's not going to be any reproduction i should note that we are definitely on the lookout out for any sort of robotic help though so i've got we can do the mechanator we'll choose that at some point once we get a little bit more advanced with our power generation we'll have a mechanator going and i've also got another mod installed it's just the basic miscellaneous robots just as haulers and cleaners so we can get that going i don't think i installed the second tier for that one which enables all different kinds of robots it's pretty fun but once you get rich enough, if you can afford like a whole slew of agricultural robots and stuff, pretty much your col your colonists just sit around doing recreation activities after that. But like I said, we're just trying to go for a basic one, but we need some help probably to fill the gaps with only six colonists. Oh no, it's going to be one of those colonies. We just had another social fight and Axel was in it. I don't know if he was the cause. Let's find out though, if we select social, silver implied negative things about Alu's, Axel's value as a human. This drove him into a rage and began a fight. Well, you know, we can't hold either one really accountable, but good news is I think they're probably just bruised up. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Animal did develop a infection during his little uh, recovery, but he got the immunity, so he's all okay now. <laughs> a little bit slower, though. But, of course, the first raid we get, hopefully it's a human raid. If we capture anybody, they're going to be donating most of their organs probably right away. Oh, look, Axel did end up bleeding. Uh, oh, he got bitten. Oh, come on, Silver. You're fighting dirty, man. 
that's how Randy is. Sometimes it's long stretches of boringness where you're just accumulating resources and building up the colony. And then boom, he hits you on with three events all at once, just like right now. So we've got some thrombos just showed up on the map. Nothing too special here, at least now. I don't think we're going to try and tame them, but I should mention I've got some interesting mods installed related to the animals of course we've got alpha animals installed but most importantly we've got vanilla genetics expanded so even though we can't recruit here at the colony we're definitely going to be using animals and probably some mutant animals too or maybe I should say genetically enhanced. That's nicer. That's a better term. But thrombos will be a big part of that, hopefully, once we get to that point. Like I said, now we'll just admire their majestic beauty. Um, and we've got the fallen monolith. That's right. So if you paid attention during the scenario part, you'll know that I disabled a lot of the different anomaly events. Not all of them, obviously, but there are still some things left. So if we want to get access to certain certain researches and stuff. Maybe we can start to, you know, investigate the fallen monolith at some point. We'll keep that in our back pocket. Again, not going to worry too much about it at the moment, but right now we're more focused on a raid. Here we go. Awesome. Awesome. So it's just one person. Even on losing is fun. The difficulty, the max difficulty still only sent the one guy. Of course, I didn't bump it up to 500% or anything like that, but let's take a look at him. Uh, oh, 13 year old female, fast walker, and capable of intellectual. Well, that's unfortunate, but either way, she looks like she's geared up pretty well. Yeah, she's got steel plate on with a machine pistol, and I missed it. Did it say she was attacking right away? Let's see. They will prepare for a while and then attack. Hmm, you know what? We might just bring out some of our uninjured people and people who have, you know, two legs and. Try and head this one off at the pass. All right, everybody here has two legs and no bite marks on them, so let's move in. I've got him just around the corner. She, I should say, is cornered. Let's see, so we've got a decent range. Oh, we might have him beaten with our auto pistols here. Oh, she's coming in hot. We have no cover, though. We can run and gun. We can run and gun. Just lead him. Remember, she will explode if she dies. I'm actually kind of just reminding myself of that fact so I don't forget again. Oh yeah, this is just... It, we're just toying with her, basically. Alright, come on. Back and forth. Back and forth. Nice! Uh, unfortunately, she did not survive, but we got a little bit of medicine, which is huge. And let's see... I've, is anyone bloodlust here in the colony? Because they might be able to wear that armor. No, unfortunately not. Oh, yes, that's right. Silver is bloodlust. I thought there was one. That's right. That's right. So we'll definitely take advantage of that armor for sure. And that's probably it. I don't see him wearing the pants or the t-shirt there. But overall, pretty good. I would have preferred if she survived. But regardless... Uh-oh, let the biting begin. Silver and Aya are going at it now. And Silver just put on that new gear. He's the bloodluster. I'm starting to think he might be the one who's the problem. Let's see, Aya called Silver a hyena. Well, she did technically start it. Drove Silver into a rage. Totally understandable. Let's check her out physically. All right, Aya, we're going to look at you. Okay, no bites or anything. Okay, just some bumps and bruises, but it is getting a little out of hand. Now, that might also partially be because... Do they get a mood debuff for being sterilized? No, doesn't appear that they do. I was a little worried about that because I don't often start off with colonists who are sterilized. But in this one, it looks like it doesn't bother them. They certainly don't like seeing corpses, though. That's one of the downsides of not developing an ideology. But of course, you know, these these vat-grown soldiers here never had much of a chance to get into the whole spiritual side of life, for better or for worse. 
Just got a quest here for the Ambush Praetor, which will probably take a pretty easy way to get some honor going on. But this reminds me, RimWorld is such a deep and complex game, especially once you put mods in it. But even the vanilla version has things in it which a lot of players don't know about until later on, much later. One of the things I didn't learn about right away, but I think I found out after watching some people play, is you can go down to Reward Preferences here, and if you click off the Goodwill section, and you can even do that for Honor from the Empire. We're going to leave ours on though, but take these off. That way when you do get offered quests, you'll have three treasure options instead of two treasure options and then a goodwill option or an honor option. That way you just have more variety in the reward selection. Well, you know, after some consideration, I realized I said we'd probably accept this, but I don't think we will. I mean, considering that our soldiers are actually banished Imperials who disobeyed orders, that's why they've been sent out on their own. They're lucky to have their lives still. I don't think it's appropriate for us to be accepting quests and stuff. In fact, I think one of the things we'll do at some point, maybe not immediately, but we're going to try and make enemies with the White Empire here I don't know I wish I would thought of that earlier maybe I could have found a mod or something which allows us to become hostile right away I think there is a quest that can eventually pop up which will turn us as enemies of the Empire and if we get that we'll probably accept it but either way like I said these six they don't belong with the white empire now one thing we are working on speaking of enemies and hostile faction is trying to get our front lines here established now instead of using the normal well one of my standard methods for security such as the trap funnel we're going with embrasures these are part of the mod collection linked in the description below and these just make our front lines a little bit easier to defend it's not you know perfectly safe because enemies can shoot through these just like we can so we have to be careful and just getting the walls up first is you know the first step essentially then we'll start to build some defensive structures that our colonists can stand behind when they shoot and things like that and just blocking walls overall but it's a it's a it comes in stages you know like i said the first part is just to get the compound secured with a nice sturdy wall our researchers are hard at work discovering the mysterious secrets of how to make pemmican and construct batteries. That's right. It's a very modest start, but we are working on mending next. And one of the big themes of this playthrough is going to be our high levels of technology that we're going to reach. And of course, it will be a challenge with just six people, but we do have a good core group of researchers who have at least minor passions in it and stuff. So we should be able to get these guys all up to level 20 in no time and intellectual, which consequently, thanks to one of the mortar accuracy mods I have, will also make them really great at aiming mortars too, which is good as well. But um, we always need colony defenses. And you can see we're starting to tame some of the wildlife. I grabbed a couple of mules. We've got them t uh, tied up right now, but we can release them since the walls are complete i could just deconstruct that and release them here we've got a little pen marker at some point i want to set up a true barn for them so that they're not wandering around here by the front lines whenever the shooting starts but for right now it's just a quick easy way and of course in the desert we're going to need to take advantage of any wildlife which happens to wander through here well, back to the research tree. Again, we'll probably spend a decent amount of time looking through this, trying to figure out what we're going to work on next. But right now, it's just the basics. Um, we finished off mending. I think we're going to get kind of bold here and go straight for mortars. Now, gun turrets was something that we started with as part of the scenario, as I think I've mentioned. But mortars are also incredibly helpful. Unfortunately, we don't have the barrels yet, but I do have a mod which allows us to produce our own barrels from the machining table so it might be smart to get that up and running too but uh oh looks like we're out of steel we might have to find a vein sticking out of the mountains i know we've got one just down here it's a little bit far from the front lines but that will help 
And you know what? I should mention too, this is not a true desert. It is arid shrubland. I might refer to it as a desert though, but that's just because I'm not used to playing on these dry maps. I'm definitely more of a cold weather type of person in real life as well as in RimWorld, but this is a challenge for sure. And of course, we haven't even gotten to our first summer yet. So I do have one temperature control unit, which is a really handy little mod too, just adds a single little device and it serves as both an air conditioner and a heater essentially but I have a feeling we won't need the heater function too much on this map oh boy I was just putting the finishing touches on our walls here around the garden keep that nice and safe when we got a notification a behemoth has wandered into the area this is something new I'm not sure what mod this is from, but we scroll down. There it is, Alpha Animals. Interesting. I haven't played with this one in a while, but... Oh, look at this beauty. She is 66 years old, a forsaken creature, which is believed to reside in the outer star belts. Legend speaks of incredibly intelligent and fierce dragons ruling over whole planets. Devastating fire, incomprehensible power. The thunder is their voice and announces their coming. They were once hundreds and now are but few. On the last days, the Forsaken will rise again and darken the sky. Special abilities, Behemoths were used as powerful beasts of burden. They can defend themselves quite well. Their flame attacks quite dangerous. And they can regenerate their wounds. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is amazing. I definitely, we have to get our hands on one of these eventually. Oops, had it on super speed there. But, yeah. I mean, again, this is probably... 20% chance, that's not terrible, but still too dangerous for us and probably something we couldn't feed at the moment. Oh boy, here we go. This is a good thing. Now, I'm not necessarily trying to play as an evil colony. We're not going to be eating people or anything like that, but we're definitely a pragmatic group here, the Super Six. And these folks look like they've got two usable legs, actually four four good legs between them and you know our boy animal is missing one so normally i would go ahead and just capture one of the pawns if i thought they were worth recruiting but this guy's super slow he probably has bad legs yeah we don't want his legs but this time around no recruitment that just means we're going to be grabbing them for the organs at this point maybe we'll do other stuff down the road do some ghouls or something i'm not against that but um anyway like i said we'll just grab whoever's the youngest or we have the best chance of attack uh capturing 100 percent all right and, of course, if any prisoners have bionics, too, we'll be extracting those right away. All right, here we go. I've got it set up. We'll, we'll try and arrest two at once, but as I mentioned before, it's nearly impossible to time it exactly right. See, when you grab one, they all go hostile towards you. So there's always, like, and, and they move around a bunch, so it's hard to time it. Look at this guy. He's like, I don't want any part of this. Oh, the old Hussar. You don't see them very much, do you? No, no, no. How old is this guy? 91-year-old Hussar. And he still doesn't even have a max shooting. Sir, you're a disgrace. Get out of here. Well, we kidnapped some charity seekers and apparently that's cause for a party so check that out everybody's having a little party out here in the yard i guess we are running an evil colony after all but um nonetheless we actually did manage to capture two of those people alive one of them was pretty badly shot up but we're getting him all uh yeah pieced together basically at this point and this one up here we are taking this one apart as you can see we're not doing every single organ just the arms legs the spine and the eyeballs and then we're doing the brain as the final so we're going to get a good chunk of organs it's really at this point just a balance between how much herbal medicine we have so i mean at any point we could get raided again and some of those guys or mechs or whatever horrors could set fire to our little 
little growing spot and this is basically all we've got now so in other words we've got to be very careful about not just our medicine but all the resources we have at the moment these little starting colonies they're so very fragile aren't they guys but anyway i think that will do it for our very first episode of the new super six series i hope you're enjoying it so far i love to hear from you guys down below in the comments whether you've got tips or additional mods you think might be fitting for the run let me know down below of course it'd be great if you hit the like button for me share the video with any of your friends out there who might not be aware of the channel subscribe and once more i do have my patreon account I've, that's linked in the description i'll be uploading this series videos for this early over there so you can watch them before they drop on youtube and you get them ad free of course along with access to a private discord server with myself and my other patreons but anyway guys thank you so much for joining me and i will see you on the next one Hey everyone, I just want to give a personal thank you to my Patreon supporters. Their contributions help make my work possible and I am tremendously grateful to them. I'd also like to extend an invitation to you to help support my work on Patreon as well. Your donations allow me to upgrade my PC and avoid the dreaded hardware despair. It also gives me more time to devote to new projects and create longer content such as live streaming. No matter what what you decide. Thank you for visiting my channel.